Who's got the weirdest appendages of them all? Well, in the natural world, there are all kinds of strange limbs, lips, and lumps. We're counting down the top 10 most extreme appendages in the animal kingdom and comparing them to our own unusual protuberances. Discover that beauty is in the eye of the beholder when animal appendages are taken to the most extreme. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places and extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme. It doesn't matter where you travel on the planet. All humans are built to the same basic structure. We might be different colors and sizes, but we all share the same appendages. Things are very different in the animal kingdom. Some animals have bizarre attachments not found on the human body, while others take ordinary appendages to the extreme. You just have to see what our first contender has done to its tongue. In New Zealand, Maui warriors use their tongue to threaten opponents as part of the haka, or war dance. Our countdown begins with an animal that has found another violent use for its tongue. It's the chameleon. Hidden inside its mouth is a tongue that can extend twice the length of its body. It uses this extraordinary appendage to catch anything from insects to small birds. Using high-speed cameras, scientists have calculated that the chameleon's tongue accelerates to more than 20 kilometers an hour in only 20 milliseconds. In theory, muscles just can't move that quickly. But then, it's not the muscles that are doing the moving. The secret to the chameleon tongue's amazing speed comes from a mass of elastic collagen tissue that stores energy similar to a taut string on the bow of an arrow. Muscles in the tongue stretch this elastic cord, just like an arm pulling back on a bow. When the chameleon launches its attack, the collagen releases its stored energy, catapulting the tongue forward like an arrow to its target. However, this tongue is no ordinary arrow. The chameleon's able to contort the tip of its tongue to form a deadly suction seal around its prey. Imagine if we had a tongue like a chameleon. It would be like an average man having a tongue that's more than three meters long. And it's powerful. The suction on the tongue of a 50 gram chameleon can lift the equivalent of a man picking up an eight and a half kilogram sack of potatoes with his tongue.
While no humans have expandable tongues like a chameleon, some people have found a bizarre food that increases the size of their appendage. They don't eat insects, but stinging nettles. The spines on these plants contain irritating chemicals, and yet in Dorset, England, they're on the menu. Welcome to the World Stinging Nettle Eating Championships. Competitors have one hour to eat as many leaves as their stomachs and their tongues can handle. The competition began as an argument in a pub between two farmers, but now attracts entrants from all over the world. After an hour of eating nettles, not only are the competitors' mouths sore and swollen, the natural dye from the leaves has turned their tongues black. Our tongue is not nearly as impressive as the chameleon's, but at least it's an appendage that we have in common. As our countdown continues, we'll meet contenders with strange lumps and protuberances that could have come straight out of our worst nightmares. The chameleon's not the only animal that hangs around in trees with a bizarre appendage in its mouth. Crawling in to number nine in the countdown are snails. There are more than 60,000 species of these mollusks, and they all have one thing in common. Snails don't have any bones so they can't use jaws like us to chew on leaves. Instead, their mouths have a unique appendage that lets them grind up food. It's a ribbon of microscopic teeth called a radula, and it's much more than just a tongue. This muscular appendage can be covered with up to 750,000 tiny spines made from the same tough substance that forms insect armor plating. To see how the radula works, you need to take a close look inside the head of a snail. As the radula is pushed forward over the surface, First, the teeth cut into the food. Then they scoop up pieces of leaf, or flesh, because not all snails are vegetarians. They may be slow, but some snails are hunters. Their teeth are long and dagger-like, and they can fire their radula outside of their mouth to hook into prey. Thanks to this bizarre appendage, one of the world's slowest animals can become a predator. And millions of years ago, there was another animal that went hunting with an equally strange set of teeth. This is the lower jaw of an ancient species of shark called Helicoprion. Scientists are still puzzled about how this now extinct animal used such a strange arrangement of 180 teeth. Perhaps Helicoprion used its buzzsaw teeth to snag squid-like creatures with a sideways swipe of its head. 
Fossilized shark teeth are common on the seafloor because these predators are constantly replacing old teeth with newer, sharper weapons. This is as true of today's sharks as it was of ancient species like Helicoprion. But there's another predator on the seafloor that proves you don't have to go through lots of teeth to have a deadly bite. The cone snail has just one tooth on its radula, which has become a harpoon. The snail can fire its deadly appendage at lightning speed to inject a lethal venom through the hollow barbed fang. The snail pulls the radula back in its mouth. It quickly engulfs its paralyzed prey. The tongues of our first two contenders may have been great appendages for catching dinner. But still to come, are women that need a lot of lip to catch a husband? And later, is there something fishy about this very strange appendage? Flying in to number eight in our countdown of extreme appendages is the dragonfly. In the sky, it's a powerful predator, chasing insects with terrifying speed. It can live for up to seven years, but only the last few weeks are spent in the air, producing eggs that hatch underwater. This is the dragonfly's juvenile form called a nymph. It has no wings, but it's still a ferocious hunter, thanks to an extreme appendage. The lower lip of the nymph has become a harpoon, as deadly as the chameleon's tongue. But first, it has to creep within range. Unlike most insects, but just like humans, the dragonfly's two big eyes have an area where the vision overlaps. This means it can clearly focus on the target and accurately judge the best place to strike. The lower lip hits in less than 25 milliseconds and hooks pierce the prey, so there's no escaping the dragonfly's deadly appendage. However, dragonfly nymphs are not the only ones with an unusual lower lip. In some Ethiopian tribes, an enlarged lip is a sign of status. At a young age, the woman's bottom teeth are removed and her lower lip is pierced. Over time, her lip is stretched with the insertion of a clay plate. Young girls stretch their mouths with sticks to prepare for the clay plates, because the bigger the plate, the more cattle she'll be worth when married. It's much easier for a dragonfly to enlarge the size of its lower lip. It uses the hydraulic pressure generated when water is squeezed out of its abdomen and into the lower lip, shooting it forward. The same hydraulic pressure also provides the dragonfly with an escape mechanism. Instead of forcing water into its lip, it fires it out its bottom. Simply by changing the direction of the water flow, the dragonfly nymph can either fire its lower lip or use its bottom to squirt itself to safety. So far, we've seen a lightning-fast lip and a tongue with a suction cup tip. But still to come, 
How would you like to be able to read Braille with your nose? And later, we'll meet real-life swingers that put Tarzan to shame. According to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, more cosmetic surgical procedures are carried out on the nose than any other part of the body. But if people had an appendage like our next contender, there'd be many more wealthy plastic surgeons out there. The elephant has a nose that can grow more than two meters long. Its trunk is actually a combination of the elephant's nose and upper lip, fused into the Swiss Army knife of animal appendages. At the tip, it has two lobes that are like powerful fingers, capable of stripping bark from trees or picking a meal of leaves six meters above the ground. Made up of more than 40,000 muscles, the trunk is both precise and powerful. It can delicately pick up a coin as well as a tree. It can suck up an astounding 200 liters of water in four and a half minutes. The trunk is also a shower nozzle and snorkel all in one. The elephant's amazing appendage really can do it all. So it's surprising that when it's born, an elephant has no muscle tone in its trunk. Since it suckles through its mouth for the first few months, a baby doesn't need its appendage to feed. It takes a year for the elephant's trunk to fully lengthen and the calf to gain control of the longest nose in the animal kingdom. Obviously, being born with long appendages has its advantages. Just ask actor Matthew McGrory. When casting for the movie Big Fish, the producers were looking for a giant. At a towering 2 meters 28 tall, Matthew McGrory stood out from the crowd. I read the script and I read it from start to finish, I didn't put it down. Matthew was studying to be a lawyer when he put his degree on hold to pursue a career in Hollywood. He became not only the world's tallest actor, but he also had the world's largest feet. Measuring more than 44 centimeters, Matthew needed handmade socks and size 29 and a half shoes. As a young man, his feet were cast in plaster to provide models for medical reference. Matthew McGrory made the most out of his big appendages. And so does the elephant. The elephant's trunk really is a work of art. However, this incredible nose is just an extreme form of an appendage that we have on our own face. As our countdown continues, we'll see body parts that look much stranger and grow in really weird places.
If you live in the dark, touch can become one of your most important senses. The human hand contains the highest concentration of touch receptors on our body, which is why fingers are so important for people who read Braille. Our next contender also relies on an extreme sense of touch to find its way in the dark, but it has fingers on its nose. The aptly named Star Nose Mole has 22 finger-like projections on its snout. These fingers are covered in 25,000 touch receptors, connected to an astounding 100,000 nerve fibers running to the mole's brain. That's why the mole's nose is at least six times more sensitive than a human hand. The finger-like appendages let the mole tap objects in its tunnels incredibly quickly. Scientists have calculated that compared to an ordinary mole, the star nose can find 14 times as many small prey items in a given time. When it comes across a tasty worm or insect larva, it can determine if it's edible and gobble it down in only 230 milliseconds. Our fingers may only have a fraction of the sensitivity of the star-nosed mole's snout, but they are still one of our most useful appendages. For 11-year-old Jamie Gill from England, keeping all of his ten fingers was so important he had to sacrifice other parts of his body. An accident with a motor for an inflatable bed left Jamie with two badly damaged fingers on his right hand. So doctors suggested that he replace his fingers with toes. After 15 hours in surgery, Jamie now has a complete set of fingers and a couple of missing toes. The operation was a complete success and now Jamie's toes work just as well on his hands. The star-nosed mole has also found that fingers come in handy when they're on your nose. Not only do they help the mole find food and navigate in the dark confines of the burrow, but just imagine how useful the appendages would be for picking your nose. Our last two contenders have their noses all pushed out of shape. But there are plenty more weird appendages to come, including an extra limb that would be really useful for those magnificent men on the flying trapeze. And later, we'll discover how to turn a tortoise into an off-road racer. Tarzan makes it look easy, but humans are not built for swinging through trees. That's why the Tarzans of the natural world come equipped with an extra limb. Swinging in to number five in our countdown of extreme appendages is the spider monkey. There are several species in the forests of South America, and they all have the long spider-like limbs from which the monkeys got their name. When you're jumping around up to 30 meters above the forest floor, it's safer to have five hands than four. That's why the spider monkey has a most extreme appendage on its rear end, a long, strong tail.
A spider monkey's body weighs around 8 kilograms, but its tail is so strong, it has no trouble holding its full weight while hanging upside down. On the tip is a fleshy hairless pad with grooves similar to a human palm. Just like fingerprints, the pattern of marks is individual to each monkey. The grooves help it to grip branches or grasp fruit and berries from neighboring trees. One species even uses its tail to collect water from holes in tree trunks. The spider monkey's tail is its longest appendage and its primary function is to help this agile acrobat swing through the trees, often covering distances of 12 meters per swing. A spider monkey proves that you can use more than just arms and legs to help you move fast. Although only one animal gets around on an appendage taken from a model airplane. Meet Winky, a 50-year-old tortoise from the Longleat Safari Park in England. Things were looking grim for Winky when she lost her leg to a mystery predator. But then, her keeper fitted her with a new appendage. Instead of a leg, it was a wheel. We have a main shaft actually resined onto the shell. And this doesn't hurt the tortoise, even though this is living tissue. Just like a Formula One racer, Winky can make a pit stop when she needs a new tire or wants to go off-road. The other tortoises do their best to keep up, but with the help of her new wheel, there's no stopping Winky from being the first to breakfast in the morning. The spider monkey has no wheels, but it's still the fastest animal in the trees of South America. Our next contender also has an amazing tail. So amazing, it can save its life. While most humans are attached to their appendages, there's a story of a soldier who was captured in the Persian Wars back in 484 BC. The only way he could escape from the wooden stocks was to cut off his own foot. He later replaced his missing limb with a wooden model and so became the first person to use an artificial appendage. Our next contender can also voluntarily lose a body part, if it means its life. Scuttling in to number four in the countdown is the lizard. Several species of these reptiles have developed a special trick for escaping a predator. For this Tenerife lizard from the Canary Islands off the coast of Spain, the biggest threat is another Tenerife lizard. Dominant blue-spotted males are constantly fighting off intruders competing for food and females. A battle can last for 30 minutes, but rather than risk suffering a mortal injury, the losing lizard can create a distraction by dropping its tail. The nerves in the tail keep firing for a short time after it's detached, so while his opponent or a predator is preoccupied with the wriggling tail, the male sneaks off to safety. 
The lizard is number four in the countdown because it can voluntarily let go of an appendage. And, thanks to modern technology, losing a limb does nothing to slow down some humans. Sarah Reinertsen is an extraordinary athlete. At 27, she completed the Hawaiian Ironman, the world's toughest triathlon. Yet Sarah had her leg amputated when she was just seven years old. She competes thanks to a prosthetic leg developed by Oser, a leading manufacturer of prosthetic limbs. Sarah works closely with Scott Elliott, a specialist limb engineer from Oser. He introduced her to the revolutionary C-shaped flex foot. Just like a diving springboard, the curve of the foot responds to pressure from the body and it has proved invaluable for Sarah. I've been running for many years and, and I've done several marathons, but when I got my first flex run uh, foot, I managed to take 37 minutes off of my marathon time. After breaking numerous world records on the track, she's now competing in the triathlon. While she swims with only one leg, other disciplines require different appendages. For an amputee to train for something like the Ironman, you need the best technology that's out there. And so I truly do have an extreme running leg and I have an extreme biking leg. And without those two things, I could never be out there doing the triathlon races that I do. For Sarah and the Tenerife Lizard, losing a limb is no disability. This reptile can survive just fine without its tail. When its appendage detaches, it splits at a natural weak point in the lizard's vertebrae. Blood vessels are clamped to prevent excessive bleeding. Within a short time, the Tenerife lizard will regrow its tail, but this time, the bony vertebrae are replaced with cartilage. It's a nice trick, but it can't compete with our next contender that grows appendages to house an alien. Whether it's for trickery or the trapeze, a tail can be a valuable appendage. But still to come is a shocking protuberance that contains the sting of death. And later we'll meet a guy that just needs one kiss to stay attached to a female forever. When it comes to bizarre appendages, our next contender doesn't have just one weird growth, its back is covered in hundreds of them. Meet the nudibranch, a type of sea slug. Each one of those finger-like tendrils is an appendage equipped with a secret weapon that it steals from its dinner. And its favorite thing on the menu is the sea anemone. Most animals avoid sea anemones because their tentacles contain microscopic stinging cells, but not the nudibranch. It's immune to the anemone's poison and has even found a way to store another animal's body parts inside its own appendages. 
Imagine if we were like a nudibranch. We'd be able to swallow chunks of anemone tentacle without destroying the immature stinging cells. Instead, they'd be transported to the tips of finger-like appendages that would grow out of our back. Embedded in these projections, the alien cells would develop to maturity. Eventually, each appendage would be armed with small capsules containing a coiled thread-like tube. If a predator gets too close, the stinging cells fire like little harpoons. And now, humans can also pack a sting like a nudibranch. At the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Adam Whiten and Yolita Nugent have developed a jacket with shocking capabilities. Laced with electrified wires, the stylish waterproof coat can deliver an 80,000 volt shock to a would-be attacker. All it requires is a 9 volt battery and the key to activate the circuitry. A rubber lining protects the wearer from the shock, since touching this coat would be like sticking your finger in a wall socket. Adam and Yolita hope to market this wearable stun gun as a protection device for women. The Nudibranch's protective jacket doesn't need batteries, just a good supply of body parts from another animal. In this case, you really are what you eat. Our next contender can be found in the stones at the bottom of freshwater lakes and rivers. Although it's such a great mimic that you might not recognize it if you saw its incredible appendage. North America is home to over 300 species of freshwater mussel and nearly 800 species of native fish. But sometimes it can be difficult to tell them apart. This isn't a fish, but a fleshy lump of modified gills growing out from the lip of a female mussel shell. Complete with fake eyes and tail, this appendage is a lure to attract fish. That's because its babies will only grow when attached to the gills of large fish. The bite of the fish ruptures the lure, releasing thousands of mussel larvae into the water, most of which are sucked into the fish's gills. These microscopic mussels snap closed in response to chemical cues released by the fish's skin and gills. So instead of an easy meal, the fish picks up a load of Klingons that can stay in the gills for up to six months. Different species of mussel grow different appendages to attract a specific type of fish. Strangely enough, mussels are not the only ones to grow appendages on their lips to attract a host for their offspring. Some researchers believe that men have facial hair to increase their attractiveness. Studies suggest that most women think the ideal man has a big jaw and a strong chin. So the theory is that facial hair evolved as a way to increase the apparent size of the jaw. And nobody increases the size of their jaw more than competitors at the World Beard and Mustache Growing Championships 
held in Schumburg, Germany. The Germans take their facial hair very seriously, which may explain why Germany won 13 out of the 17 categories in a recent championship. It would be harder to choose a winner in a lineup of freshwater mussels. Their appendages can be so diverse that some look more like a fisherman's lure than part of a mussel. Fish are unharmed by the invasion of young mussels. Their gills provide nutrition for the shellfish until they're mature enough to drop into the riverbed to start the cycle over again. But not even the extraordinary growths on these shellfish can compete with the lumps found on the animal that's number one in the countdown. We've seen the nine contenders. Their appendages are the weirdest of the weird. Only one animal has a more extreme body part. The most extreme appendages in the countdown are found on a group of very bizarre animals. There are more than 15,000 species of fish in the world, and most of them have fins for swimming. However, the animal at number one in the countdown is a fish that uses its fins for walking. The anglerfish seldom swims. It uses its strange stubby fins like little legs. It doesn't need to swim after its dinner, because the anglerfish has found another use for a fin. It's turned an appendage into a fishing line. That wriggling worm is actually a flap of skin made from an extension of the anglerfish's dorsal fin. The anglerfish engulfs its prey thanks to a suction pressure created when the fish expands the volume of its mouth by 12 times in less than six thousandths of a second. But this isn't the only species of anglerfish that its fin into an extreme fishing lure. When you descend far below the surface, there's no light, so a wriggling worm would be no use as a fishing lure. That's why the female deep-sea anglerfish has a modified fin that contains luminescent bacteria. The glow is thought to attract prey like moths to a light bulb. However, the female deep-sea anglerfish has another appendage that's without doubt the strangest growth in the countdown. These strange lumps were thought to be extra fins until scientists found out about the female anglerfish's mating behavior. If you were like a female anglerfish, you wouldn't have to go looking for a date. Instead, you'd release a chemical trail of pheromones into the water and the guys would find you. Unfortunately, male anglerfish are 40 times smaller than their females. However, they can give the ultimate love bite. If we were like an anglerfish, the male's body would start to degenerate, his jaws would fuse into the skin, and his internal organs would disappear. He'd never eat, because he'd get nutrients from the female's bloodstream that would become fused with his own. It took years for scientists to work out what caused the strange lumps on the female anglerfish and on one unfortunate man. Born in
Born in England in 1862, Joseph Merrick first began to develop tumors on his face before his second birthday. Back then, doctors had no explanation for the bulbous cauliflower growths that crippled his body. Soon, the only way he could support himself was to earn a living as a sideshow freak. He was the Elephant Man. Fortunately, the story had a happy ending. A doctor at the Royal London Hospital befriended Joseph and offered him refuge within the hospital's walls. Joseph Merrick died at age 27 in April 1890, and since then, scientists have continued to try to identify the cause of his strange deformities. Recently, researchers extracted samples of Joseph's DNA from hair follicles trapped inside the molds made of his face when he died. They concluded that he suffered from two different rare diseases that affected his bones, skin, and nervous system. It was just as difficult determining the nature of the strange growths on a female anglerfish. Since the fish lives in such deep water, making observations of its behavior is incredibly difficult. That's why it took scientists many years to work out that the free-swimming male would become nothing more than a bump on the female's body. After biting onto his mate, the male becomes nothing more than a lump of reproductive organs on call to fertilize eggs at the whim of the female. The advantage is that in the freezing darkness of the deep ocean, the chances of finding a mate are small, so when you meet Mr. Wright, it pays to never let him go. But how would you like to have a partner that clings to you for life? A parasite that sucks the very blood from your veins? And that's why, when it comes to amazing appendages, the female anglerfish with its strange little male really is the most extreme.